Well, welcome live around the world to the Madera Speedway, the fastest one-third mile in the West. Behind me, the legends of Kearney Bowl, a big part of what we do here because tonight we are honoring three legends of valley racing with al mambo pombo marshall Sargent, and of course smoky hanoian and in a few moments we're going to learn more about those three gentlemen an exciting night tonight i know the main course everyone's waiting for is the pcs super late models presented by pennylawyers.com a 75 lap main event and that's going to be coming up in just a little bit after these legends of kearney barvis Last year, it was a non-series regular that got the victory. It was Matthew Hicks. This year, another non-series regular, Las Vegas' Aaron McMorrin, is going to start him off on the pole with a lot of drivers who have traveled long distances from Lake County in the Ukiah area to compete here for one time only this year in 2018. As he clears Buddy Shepard down the front straightaway and a new race leader, Liddy White, but he really swung wide and won it too, and that might have been a bit of a mistake, but look at the run he gets down the back straightaway. Lenny White with a very unique line, but it's tricky and he's going to lead the 33rd lap, but only by a nose. I want to welcome in the newest member of our broadcast crew going to join us throughout the course of this day. We welcome Stephen Blakely on pit road. Stephen? Yeah, and there's all kinds of folks down here checking things out and uh, we got an opportunity to find Stefan Wilson down here. And, of course, the car all new in 2018. Are you learning anything about that this weekend? Yeah, you know, it's tough to learn something here at Long Beach that will apply at, uh, you know, at, at Indy, but... Under 14 minutes remaining in one of two sessions today. An update on Ed Jones from Stephen Blakesley. Yeah, you know, Ed Jones, he was our 2015 winner here in the Indy Lights, the last time the Indy Lights raced here, so he does have a pedigree here. But I think more importantly, last year he did finish in sixth in this event. So now moving over to the NTT Data Honda for Chip Ganassi Racing and making adjustments on both ends of the race car, trying to move this car up the grid just a little bit. Notice they were making some air pressure adjustments on their set of red tires. I don't know if we've seen a whole lot of drivers go out on their reds just yet. The guy who was the fastest in this session, Stephen, you've got him, Alexander Rossi. Yeah, a California driver nonetheless. I'm from Sacramento. He's from Grass Valley. The driver, or Nevada City, I should say, the driver is Alexander Rossi. And P1 in practice, how does that sound? That's good. Uh, it's, a, it's obviously where you want to end up at the end of Friday. Uh, As in a real quick point on Takuma Sato, uh, he had run sixth in the first practice. Both Sato and his Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan teammate, Graham Ray Hall, were both on qualifying runs on sticker reds. And Sato had moved his way up to fourth. And Ray Hall had slipped down to about eighth, I believe, on the final rundown. So Sato was on a pretty flying lap there when he had that incident. Back up to you guys. And unfortunately, he's going to make a long night for his crew, Anders. Yeah. This will be a pretty fun interview because we have our points leader in the Junior Late Model Series at Madera, Jesse Love. And then we also have Ryan Blaney from the NASCAR Monster Energy Series. And uh, Ryan, first of all, what brings you here to the West Coast Stock Car Hall of Fame? Well, we, we raced at Sears Point this weekend, so uh, we just flew in a little bit ago, and uh, I've never been to this event before, so now I was asked to come, so I figured I'd come check it out. Ryan, when you were coming out through the ranks with all that navigating the system, kind of like you were describing, did you really end up doing a lot of points racing, or was it kind of just a race here, race there? Yeah, um, we did a little bit of points racing um, a couple years in the late model stuff and past, but... Never in the K&N stuff, uh, never did any points in that. We just did a handful of races a year, and I ran for points a couple of years in Brad's Truck Series. Caught up with someone pretty important, Brian Sperber here, president of ISM Raceway. I got that right. That is correct, yes. For many years, of course, we were known as Phoenix International Raceway, and uh, this year we have a great partnership with a company called ISM Connect. And we When you talk to a lot of the inductees, and not only this year, but in the past as well, Phoenix is always one of the tracks that comes up as where a lot of their best racing memories are. And so what does that mean to you as the president of the Speedway to hear how important that racetrack has been in the past when you look forward to what you're trying to do down the road? Well, it's really gratifying and, and humbling to hear uh, drivers talk about our racetrack in those terms. What's it like trying to get a truck to go around a road course? And that wasn't the only road course you guys ran with like Heartland Park and some other places like that. So what was that like trying to get a truck to go around a road course? Well, it's actually, it was, uh, you know, a truck and a car, they drive a little bit different. But I mean, once you bolt in there, you still got the cage around and you make it happen.
Well, today's game is benefiting the American River Bank Foundation since 2004. They've donated 100% of their proceeds to vulnerable women and children throughout Sacramento. Here that you can bid on. So that's one way that you can win today. But you can also win if you make your way over here to our 50-50 raffle where you can win some money. That's right, 50% of the money is gonna to go to our River Cats Foundation, and 50% of the money is going to go to you from Supercuts. So make some noise for Dylan out there, Rayleigh Field, as he gets ready for a fly ball number one. He's got it. The Sutter Health Diaper Derby. Here's Steven with tonight's contestants. All right, get your mint juleps ready. It's time for the Diaper Derby. We got three lovely contestants. Our youngest one in red over there is Anthony. He's six months old. We also have a pair of twins. We have Davis in the, uh, in the gray and blue there. And then Dax, who's the older of the twins by 13 minutes. So let's see, Anthony, Davis, and Dax, are you guys ready? I think we're ready to get this thing started. And I'm gonna say we're off. With the diaper derby, let's see if anybody makes any progress at all. Time to play the feud. We surveyed 100 people. Top four answers will be on the board. And what I want to know is, what is something you do or somewhere you go on the 4th of July? I go to my parents' house. Goes to his parents' house. We'll see if that answer is up on the board. Goes to his parents' house. That will go down the line here. Watch fireworks. Fireworks. OK, that's a good answer. Yeah, fireworks number one answer.